All right, this Hangout on Air is live. And Rob, don't forget to plug in your uh, your recording mic because I forgot to plug mine in. Actually, I've got it plugged in. I just got to start it. Okay, I got to got to make sure my my volume level's okay on mine. Hey everybody, we uh, Yo, tried up? to be 100% prepared <laughs> before we started the stream. As you can see, we weren't quite there, but uh, we want to make sure we record our audio locally. So, we had a guest plan for tonight. A very I, cool guest. Very cool way. guest, and I apologize to guests who we had to uh, push back because uh, Rob and I felt it was important to get some information out. So, we're going to... Oh, we already got a mic check. Sounds good. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna go over some some details. We're gonna go over some things that have been provided to us, and we're gonna leave it that way. We're not investigative reporters. We're not going to come to any conclusions by the end of this podcast. Actually, we, will, we do have one. I, I have a conclusion which involves around go to your credit card company if you've paid for stuff. But yeah. uh, otherwise, we're going to just provide what both sides have provided to us and then talk about a few facts that we know, and then that's it. We're not a court of law. We're not the end-all, be-all in this statement. We are just guys who had bowling audio on a less than a month ago and we just want to provide some updates so i'm going to say that again those who are watching on youtube sorry i'm going to say it again we're going to we start our podcast we start the live stream i'm going to say that again so just want to let you guys know yeah let you know up front what's going on just let you know right now so if you think that this is going to be a bash fest and you know you're going to have all the answers that you've ever asked all the yeah, answers to every question that you'll ever ask. That's not going to happen here, most likely. No. So, we never intended... Actually, we really didn't want to do this. That, I really didn't want to do it. Rob really didn't sure. want to do it. Because it just... It's not... We're not the court of law on the internet with the car audio community, even though... We have information and we get lots of information. This is not our place. So I'm going to say right. that up front. We're not attorneys. We're not diving into any details about finances and things like that. So we're not going there. Yeah. We are primarily concerned with the people who have money put out there and are not receiving either product or a refund. And we're just providing information. That's it. Yeah. Just a little info. With the carpet hat. With the with the reverse hat. Yeah. You must respect Derek's authority. Well, the reason I have to do this, because if I don't, there'll be a big glare. Right I got here. one. I think I got two. Like right here. Yes, you do. You have yeah. to get you a hat and throw it on in reverse. Oh, I like them, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a beanie. I'll send you a beanie for Christmas. Yeah. It's hot enough in here as it is. <laughs> it's funny, man. It was, um, let's see, what day was that? Monday? Mo no, Sunday. It was 74 degrees here. Yeah. Monday, it was 52 degrees. Yeah, it's kind of been like that here. It was, uh, Saturday, I think, was really nice, and it's been in the low 20s ever since, every day. In the morning, anyways, and, and then it heats up to about the 50s. Yeah, I hate the 50s. Give me the 40s or the 70s, man. The 50s just kind of suck. Yeah. They're tough. They didn't have no car audio back then either. So, uh... Da -ding -ding. <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, have sound effects hooked up yet because we don't have, like, an external soundboard. We're trying to get more people to, um... You know, we're we're trying to get enough subscribers and all that stuff, and and our podcast popular enough. Which, by the way, we've got a lot of very good reviews on our podcast. Thanks to everybody who's who's done the reviews on uh, Apple 
podcast. Oh, that's right. And, yeah. and I still do the, all this. I still haven't shipped the sub out to John Booth, but he's contacting me. We're going to ship it out, and we're giving another one away at 75. So keep those reviews coming. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, got quite a few. I think I think Rob is selling reviews to get to get subs because you look at SQology and some of the other ones, they only got like 24 reviews and yeah. 25 and because they're not giving stuff away. So we're – we're selling our souls to get reviews. I'm just kidding. We're not. Hey, but we, they did. Did they done a good pod? They done a podcast with uh, Manville Smith. I'm only uh, halfway through listening listening to it, but that one and there's a new one, Gary Biggs. That one just came out because I listened to it today. That one was good too. I didn't get to listen to that one yet. Yeah, it came out after Manville, but the Manville one was good. I've been going back and listening to some of their old ones that I hadn't heard before. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I like them. So we. We practice what we preach. We preach that people need to listen to audio about audio, and we do too. And maybe we should leave them a review. Yeah, we should. I, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it after the show. Yeah, me too. Five stars. Yeah, really enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know Cliff or the other guy who do the show, but they do a good job. Yeah. All right, we have a few more minutes. How's everybody in the chat room doing this evening? Hope everybody's doing okay. We are, this is the middle of the week, Wednesday night. We have a, uh, we had to turn down a, or we actually had already planned a guest to have tonight, which we were very excited about, but due to this, we had to push him back. But we've already got a different guest planned for next Wednesday night. And. Oh man, is this the epic guest? Epic. Oh man. On epic proportions. And then we've got another epic guest lined up that I've got to get a date ironed out with. Uh, it may not be a Wednesday, so through December, yeah. you guys keep up with keep up with us on Facebook if you're there. Uh, we'll try to also post it in the community tab on YouTube, so you guys will know. But we're gonna we we can't post in the community tab yet from this oh, channel. Oh, that's right. I can do it on my channel though and let people know. Yeah, I can do it yeah. too. Yeah, we'll do it on our own channels and let you know. Y'all like my cup. Christmas sweet Eve. cup, bro. This is my favorite cup. You know how everybody's got a favorite something favorite. This is mine. Yeah, this is mine right here. One of those vacuum cup things. Oh man, that's fancy. Yeah, I think we stole it from a volleyball tournament. I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, was, you go, you go to those volleyball tournaments, and there's just cups left everywhere. Uh, you know, when it ends, it's like, hey, I'm taking this cup. That's probably somebody who had the flu. It's like when somebody leaves a thumb drive and you pick it up off the ground and it's got a virus on it. Yeah, don't ever put a thumb drive in your computer. No, no, never. don't ever do that. Oh, speaking of that, although we're getting ready to start here and this is off topic, you're going you're gonna to be ashamed of me for what I bought recently. What'd you buy? A NES Classic. Oh, no. Yes. I want one. I want one too, but... They're everywhere. Yeah. And you can it, hack man. it. You can put 700 games on it, too. Yeah, but have you seen those ones that, that say the 700 games and they got like... They got like Don't get that, one of those. Oh, get I know the, they're garbage. Get this Nintendo one. You can put the real games on there. They got, and then, like me, you won't have time to play them, so it's a big yeah. waste of time to do it. But it's just I, I just... Uh, I watched a Mario... Super Mario Brothers 3 playthrough from one of the YouTubers that I watch, and I was like, oh, man, I need to play that game again. Let's find on it. He missed a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> he miss, missed a, he missed a whistle? Mm-hmm. Well, my watch is fast, man. It says 8 o'clock. But it, the, yeah, we got six minutes. We got six minutes. It's 7.54 here on the official timepiece, yeah. the iPad. I'm going to fix my, my Seiko. I think my heart beats a little too fast. It yeah. pushes the... Pushes the time forward. It's one Hit of those the watches right there. Yeah, it's one of the watches that don't require a battery. All you have to do is shake it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that called? Uh, I if can't you would, think of if it. If you wouldn't ask, I would have been able to say it. Yeah, I re- I know what it's called. I just can't remember. Uh, I, I can't. used to be I used to be big into watches, and I I just quit wearing them. You know, carrying around a cell phone all the time. I guess. Yeah, it's it's really just habit for me just to look down at it, even though. Yeah, I got a cell phone in my pocket too. Um, let's see. So BMX. Six minutes, Dougie oh. Fresh. You're on. <laughs> that was good. 
Oh man. Oh, speaking of BMX, so um, who commented? Paul that lives here in North Carolina. He made a comment about riding his Haro yeah. on Facebook, and I was like, Paul, what kind of what, what Haro you got, man? You got a retro? And he replied back, and he showed a picture, and it's a Pete Longkarovich uh, retro. It's a 29 inch. Wow. Paul's tall. He's like me. He's over yeah. six feet, but. I got to meet him at the last meet. Yeah, that's right. He was there. Yeah. I mean, that thing looks sweet. Dude, did you sell? He sell I sold a GT or a Diamondback for like a hundred bucks. I saw that. It's like my he God, did, I need he didn't that know. Thing, man. And he, yeah, he's close to me too. I could have gone and picked it up, probably. Yeah. But yeah, that was um, that was cool. I'd love to get one of those those cruisers. Of course, they have twenty six and twenty nine inch. But yeah. every, they're coming out with the retro ones every year that are 30 years old. So this year it's the 2000, no, the 1988 uh, version. Yeah. And they had the 87s last year, and that's the ones I really like. My last uh, Haro Sport was an 87. I, I need the, uh, like the 93 version of the Redline 360. That'd oh, be cool. There you go. You got to wait a few years. They had... Skyway had one that had the mags and everything last year. I think oh, it was yeah. six ninety nine, but they don't have it anymore. And PK Ripper, S E Racing has the big ripper. Yeah. Those go up to twenty nine inches. Dude, I I couldn't even imagine getting on a twenty inch bike right now. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah, I know I wouldn't fit. Yeah, we got some people commenting about the the BMXs. You can't really be an old school car audio guy without being a BMXer. Yeah, Especially no. if you were like 15 or 16 when you got in to car audio and it was in the 80s or early 90s. Yeah. That stuff was big. Of course, it's huge now because it's all those X games and all those ESPN games and everything they do. Yeah. It's huge. We just, we just need to get car audio on that level. No one cared about BMX for a long time. Then it started. That's what we need to do with car audio. You're right. Because it did kind of drop off there for a while. And then the, then the X Games came back and those guys were doing crazy stuff we never even thought was possible. Yeah. I remember the first tail whip aerial I saw. I was like, how did they do that? And now they do like five of them. Yeah. I, I was always into the racing more than the half pipe stuff, but mm. we did we had a quarter pipe, so we we got a little crazy on that. I didn't break anything on that because I just I didn't try anything stupid, you know. Yeah, that was fun times. Miss those days. Well, we're close enough. I guess we can go ahead and start because everybody's kind of waiting to hear what we got to say about this. So let's right. go ahead and do it. So let me switch to the dock here. And- Switch to the dock. Are you going to do the intro today, or is it me? It's episode 18. Who We had Ed on, and I done it last time, right? You did it last time. Okay, okay. give me a second to pull up the... Uh, I thought I had the document pulled up. I will momentarily. Stick with us, people. We shall start momentarily. Okay, episode 18. Let me go ahead and share my screen. We'll do the countdown. And we will officially start the podcast. Rob is muted, which is good. All right, there's a plane going overhead, so as soon as it goes away, I'll start. All right, I think it's gone enough. You don't hear it, do you? Shake your head, Rob, if you hear it. No, okay. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, 12 volt talk, episode 18, Bowling Audio. What happened? What's up, guys? This is Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com, also YouTube.com slash Big D Wiz. We're here tonight. Just Rob and I. What's going on, Rob? Yo, what's up? High Five Vega here. YouTube.com slash High Five Vega. High Five Vega everywhere. He is High Five Vega everywhere. And so we, we're we doing this podcast 
not because we want to we feel like we kind of have to so we're going to talk a little bit about Bowling Audio and some of the things that have happened recently it's been within the last week so we kind of feel like we have an obligation to the community which probably you guys who are watching we had Bernie on about a month ago talked about Bowling Audio talked a lot about old school uh, they recently made a post this week saying that they were closed up closed shop well it was very interesting that we heard that, but also we just want to kind of give a caveat here. Rob and I did not know that Bowen Audio was having financial troubles. If we did, we would not have had Bernie on the show and talk about his amplifiers and talk about new stuff that was coming that it doesn't appear was actually really coming. Um, he talked about 100 amps that were special edition that were remaining that there were still people who haven't had amplifiers shipped out. So why are you going to talk about 100 amplifiers that are, you know, available as a, as a final run of the special editions if people still were waiting on amplifiers? So we felt responsible to have a discussion tonight. Very short, very brief. We're going to have information from both sides. We're not going to allow either side to call in. This is not an investigative report by Rob and I. This is basically statements from both sides and facts we've gathered. And don't expect us to come to a conclusion. We are not attorneys. We are not going to talk about any legal matters. So, um, yeah, that's what you should expect by watching this show. And there is a motion at my floodlight cam in case you didn't hear that. <laughs> so, Rob, what would you like to say? So, I think it's a important to tell people why we started this show you know me and you we kind of trade on our name in the community and i think a lot of us do so what's important to us is the community and this is kind of a one-off thing we're not going to do this if someone gets ripped off on their amps you know or it's damaged or this or that this is an obligation that we thought we had because we had bernie on so the main thing to us is the community and the people that have been wronged by this and, you know, we're not here to take one side or the other. Like Derek said, we're just stating the facts we have. Also, we're going to read some statements that we've, that have been either publicly posted or that we've got in over email. That's a great way to put it, Rob. We definitely want to keep everything on the up and up with the community because that's what's important to us. We feel like, you know, since we have a voice here, we have quite a large audience between the two of us we feel responsible into the fact that whatever we talk about um, is not interpreted the wrong way we want to make sure that that you guys trust us because we feel we're trustworthy so when we come across things that are questionable such as this we feel like it was our obligation to provide information so um, with that said we're going to go down a list of some of the facts that we know. We're not going to make any assumptions. We're not going to make any accusations. We're literally going to go down the facts. We're going to talk about statements from each side and I will say up front I was provided a lot of information from the investor side and provided zero information from Bolin, from Bernie Bolin. So take that as you want. Again, I'm making no assumptions. Maybe he didn't have time to reply. Maybe he wants to talk about this in a court area and not online. That's fine, too. So, again, we're just providing information we were given. So, there was a post on November, was it the 30th or the 28th? I don't want to get the dates wrong. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly. Bowling, was yeah, I think it was, I think it was the 30th that said the uh, that Bowen Audio... Bernie posted that he couldn't get into Bowen Audio, that the doors were locked. So right off the bat, there was a statement that had uh, investors' names. It had phone numbers. It had email addresses. It had detailed information for investors that I didn't know about. Rob, you didn't know who these people were, did you? No, no, not until I seen it in the post. 
Yeah, so it was very strange to me, at least, to see this information posted publicly. Um, so that was posted first, and then we saw a note that somebody took of the building that showed a note by the landlord saying that rent had not been paid in two months or whatever the time period was, and, you know, just they couldn't gain access to the building. And I know from the original post, it was unclear as to whether uh, the partner, the business partner had locked them out or the landlord. But I think at this point, everybody can agree that you, we can see clearly that it's the landlord. Right, right. With back owed rent, the, yeah. the landlord did the, um, did the locking out. So um, what I did is I posted a question up on Facebook, and I'm just curious how many people had not received their amplifiers because again when we talked with Bernie um, less than a month ago it was beginning of November it was mentioned they had a hundred you know limited edition amps was their final run before they were gonna start selling to dealers so um, I asked the community I was like how many of you guys have amps paid for that haven't shipped and it w didn't take long Bernie actually replied and said there were 74 to his, to best of his knowledge. I didn't get quite that many people email me or message me telling me how many they had bought and, and how many were uh, not shipped, but 74 is a big number. When you talk about the amps range anywhere from what, 350 to like 1500, I think. Right. And, and that was the introductory price, I think. So, yeah, yeah so it's easily $50,000 or so. We don't have an exact number in that doesn't really matter um, at the moment but um, so he did mention there was 100 amps on 12 volt talk episode 14 a limited edition remaining so with that stated and Rob and you can say what your assumption was but my assumption was that all the amps that had been ordered up to that date had been had been shipped out and that was my assumption as well as there were some people that were waiting exceedingly long times that I'd seen receive their amps Exactly. So, so were, I thought that people had, everyone had received them by now. Yeah, they were trickling out. We were seeing pictures, people post of the amplifiers and, you know, really excited about them. And, you know, I finally got it in. And, yeah. and we were just like, yeah, we're rolling now. You know, things are starting to, to operate the way they should operate. So that's great. So that was our assumption. Now, once I posted this note online asking, you know, how many people had not received their amplifiers, I received quite a few messages with invoices and dates and amounts that people had paid um wow it's quite a few so uh there was a let's see i won't say the names but two thousand dollars for two amps one guy 2400 for eight amps another one um mm -hmm. we know that that brad from legends of car audio um he made it public that it took two years for him to get his amplifier. Two yeah. years from the date that he ordered it. I remember him saying something about that when he got it, you know, on his on his uh, Facebook page. Right. So my thing about that is, you know, if you're a startup company, obviously you're sourcing parts locally. You're trying to do it in, in the USA. You're trying to do the right thing. Um, you have to, I guess, set expectations. There was a lot of times where I noticed on the bowling page there would be posts that says oh we've got these amplifiers and a lot of people would reply back saying oh this is great I'm ready and then there would be no post for months yeah. or weeks I'm not sure the exact time frame but it was just very odd that um, that we were seeing posts like that but not with, with stating the facts of the people who 74-ish people who, not people because some of them ordered multiple amps, but 74 um, amplifiers that were paid for that were unshipped. Uh, we did hear from some of the suppliers also who hadn't been paid, so that's disturbing as well. Now, Rob, do you want to say anything before I get into the comments from each side? No, I think, I think you've covered it pretty well. Okay, so uh, from the investor, which... I didn't know who was the investor of Bowen Audio. I don't know that really matters. And people who've read this online on Facebook know his first name, but I'm not really going to go into his name. But I do want to read part of the statement that he sent. 
he says, Derek, I'm very saddened by all of this. This was my dream since I was 15 years old. Now it's a nightmare for me, my wife, my sister, and one additional investor. Our entire life savings and most of our retirement plans and children's college funds were wasted. For three years, we funded Bowling Audio. I'm still a big old school car audio guy. I looked at Bernie Bowling as a professional hero for me. I still dust off and show my older Ryan and PPI amps as artwork on my walls. Not so much anymore as I had to sell most of them to keep pumping every cent I could and uh, to fern, fund Bernie's plans. My wife and I leverage our house by taking equity out to continue to fund Bowling Audio. I'm not as persuasive and as engaging as Bernie. I do not have a mythical aura the way some people put around him due to my job. I don't have a Facebook account with tons of followers. I have a simple Facebook account so I can like people's posts and such. I don't even have an Instagram. Bernie is a master telling stories. I had I had numerous red flags over the past three years, but still kept putting money into the company. I have customers calling me, uh, calling me, telling me they paid over a year ago and never got anything. This is so wrong and unethical. Over the last three years, we received numerous emails from people concerned about their amps. Bernie somehow always convinced them their amps were almost ready. Now Bernie has taken away my access from the email I pay for. Just as he has full control of the company's Facebook page, he even deletes other people's messages that con contradict the false stories he's telling. We invested based on our affinity for car audio and a desire to create American-made car audio that is second to none. Instead, I've wasted my money that took over 25 years to save. I've always had to work for everything I have. I've never cheated anyone. I've never taken anything that doesn't belong to me. And I did everything I could for Bernie Bolin and Bolin Olio. We've had several opportunities to really grow and none of them fulfilled because things never shipped, were extremely late, or were defective. In one small example, the mismanagement failed opportunity. I helped sell 25 amps to a company in India that wants to distribute there. The amp Bernie sent them months behind schedule was defective right out of the box. This is truly the end of my willingness and ability to make an investment in someone and something I truly believed in. The fact that I should know better only makes the whole experience harder. So I skipped over a little bit of the statement because there were some things in there I felt that weren't relevant, um, you know, to the conversation here, but it is what it is. That came from the investor side. So I requested a response in writing from Bernie Bolin. I did not receive one. He attempted to call me yesterday. I did not want to discuss this over a phone call because I didn't want to be responsible for remembering what he said. I have a bad case of remembering what people tell me. So I want to make sure I have things in writing. So that's why I requested it in writing. I did not receive anything in writing. He agreed that he received the message and saw the document with the questions, but I did not receive any update from him. The only thing we do have is some screenshots from the online uh, statements from Bowen Audio. And I guess I can read that one real quick, Rob, and I'll, I'll share yeah. my screen for this one. And I think it's important to remember that, or state that these were up and they were public and have since been taken down. That's a good point. These were posted on the Bowen Audio page, and they were and, taken down. And, and this one in particular is what somebody copied and pasted from their statement. This one is not directly from Bowen right. or Bernie. Yeah. Right. So um, this is what Bernie said. Being completely honest here, I had nothing to do with the money side from day one. Yes, development was way slower than planned. We had to hand build each amp because we did not have the funds to have the surface mounted components done by one of the local assembly shops. We have built, we have built with two different assembly houses that did work for us for almost two years ago. Munich would just laugh and say that we would wait. We stopped doing Caracote because Munich never paid them. Bowen Audio was around on a shoestring uh, from the get go. Munich told a story to everyone, including his latest victim. Randy, which we're not going to talk about Randy here. Munich has even been paying the employees via PayPal, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
for those who did not know, I work, I world, I think he said, I think he meant I work, pay free for the last 1.5 years and basically live at the shops. Anyone wants to know what's happened, reach out to Marcus Stam or Tim, Tim Cortez to get their, uh, where are we at? Get their story before calling me out on this. I never handled the money. I did sign the checks. Manish ordered out. The company has been distraught because Manish refused to reduce his stock ownership to get proper financial backing. He counted on a possible large OEM program to save us. So sad to air this dirty laundry, but it seems this is where Manish wishes to go. Last point, if I was running this, none of my stuff would have been locked up by the landlord. I would have directed funds to, into my pocket, not the corporate account, like I did the day before being locked out. Bernie Bolin. So, that's um, statements from both sides. Now, the very last statement that's on the Bowen Audio page right now is this. It says, the only update I have is this. I've informed Randy that I have November and December rent covered. I've asked a few things we needed to be answered before one penny be released. Uh, where my computers were moved? Where are they now? Uh, where will they... Uh, Will they be there because they are needed to finish all the amps in progress? Am I allowed in the building if the rent's paid? Uh, will I be able to finish all the amps in the building? Will I be able to remove my personal items? These were asked yesterday and still no answer. If anything happens, I will update here ASAP. So that's the extent of what we have from Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think... Uh... You know, it's important to say, take these statements for what they are. We don't, you know, endorse, condone these statements. We're just reading you the statements that we've seen and the statements we've sent. So don't choose your side by these statements because obviously both sides have something to gain or something not to lose, you know, by making these statements. So we just wanted it out there so they at least get their say. Right. We want to give both sides equal opportunity to provide a statement. And one side provided it to us. The other side provided it via their online mechanism. So, like Rob said, we make no assumptions here. We're providing the information to you guys. Now, with all this stated, I will say, if you have an amplifier ordered from Bowen Audio, I would not assume that you are going to get that amplifier if you haven't already. So you need to file a dispute with your credit card company. If you used PayPal and it's been more than, is it 60 or 90 days, Rob? Do you remember? I think it's 90. If it's been more than 90 days and you're, you're out. Sorry. If you use a debit card, unless you have a really good bank that's very understanding, you're probably out. So this is a life lesson, unfortunately, for customers. And Rob has a great statement about pre-ordering things. And what's that statement, Rob? Never pre-order anything, ever. Never pre-order anything, ever. Now, the way I look at it is, it's like when you're we're doing a um, online funding. What do they call that site where you can put money in to get a product? GoFundMe. No, the other one, the one where you actually can get a product because they show new ones all the time. Oh, 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 oh. I know what you're talking anyway, about. Anyway, a lot of people will put money into those things hoping that they can get a product. In a lot of cases, they're just raising money and they never get a product. So, yeah. I hate to say it, but the people. Kickstarter. Who have, Kickstarter. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for whoever <laughs> replied to that. Cause I, I didn't that, see it in chat. I don't got chat open. Oh, I do. I, I had it up they, here. They all said it. They're like, you big dummy, yeah. it's Kickstarter. But yeah, so Kickstarter. So I, I really feel bad for the ones who, who have lost thousands of dollars. I really do. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. And again, Rob and I wanted to do this podcast uh, and live stream just to provide both sides, tell people what they should expect, which is request a charge back to get your money back. And the other thing I would say is there has been some statements online about, you know, people condoning violence and stuff like that and no. Don't don't even mention that stuff online because you you know there's there's three sides to each story right you got one person's opinion another person's side and you got the truth so we've got the two different sides here but we don't we don't know the truth no you know and and if you 
if you've ordered an amp, just assume you're not getting it. And if you cannot get a charge back, it, it, maybe you call and file a police report on it because that's what's happening. Because at the end of the day, we're not as worried about what's going on with Bernie or what's going on with Munich. We're worrying about the people that got ripped off right now, the people in our community. Yep, that's true. And that's why we're doing this follow-up. Yeah. It's for the people who, who put their money in and, and the fact that we had Bernie on the show. We talked about his products. And, and hey, we I fell under this spell myself, you know. Dude, I, like after that podcast, I was really, man, I, I really was pumped up. And it's this has all tainted that for me. You know, I, I really, it was so, it was magical. And, and I'm telling you, I fell, he threw that, that sinker out and I fell under the spell, man. So I'm not saying that, that, you know, everything he said could be true, but the fact of the matter is, I'm, in my opinion, both of them knew something a little bit about it. There's no right. way it goes south that fast with nobody knowing anything. Right. And so. I, I think I said it before and I can't remember if it was during the podcast or before when we did the, the live stream start, but I, I did as well. I, I wanted to purchase one. So I sent a, a Facebook message to Bowen Audio right after our p- last podcast and said, what models and colors do you have remaining of the limited edition amps? Because I was curious. I don't want to just say, hey, I want a you know, purple one you know, with this on it. I want to know what you have available, what you can ship out. Yeah. And I got no response and still to this day haven't received a response. So I thought it was odd that right after the podcast where I was like Rob, I was kind of like, yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's expensive, but I'd like to have one of those and you know, see what it's all about, review it for my YouTube channel, things like that. But the fact I didn't get any response and that was that, luck. That was lucky. It was much luck, right? Because I would have been out yeah. that $800 or whatever it was. And yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, a lot of this car audio guys, we transact through PayPal. You know, we're not doing a lot of credit card purchases and this and that. So outside 90 days, you're done for. That's right. Well, I think, you know, we've got plenty of time before. I think maybe we can kind of read some of the questions that we had for Bernie and let him know kind of what we, we what, what we wanted to know from him. And then maybe we get on the fun stuff, you know, picks of the week, YouTube. That sounds good to me. Would it, do you have the doc open? Do you want to read? I, I, feel do. Like I, I feel like I've been talking too much. So you can go ahead and All read right. some of the questions. So the the first question we had is, tell us what happened to Bowling Audio. Do you still have the amplifier designs? You know, that's something we wanted to know. Uh, what about the business plan? Was What was the estimated time frame to become profitable? Different products in vision for the company? Question mark. So now that, but I'll stop you real quick. I yeah. understand questions like that may be pushing the boundaries because people don't want to talk about business plans and things like that. Yeah. But from an outsider looking in, seeing you know all these delays of products going out, um, seeing, I don't even know how many shipped over the three-year period, but I was just trying to understand how can you plan on a company becoming profitable when you're only shipping out five amps a month or whatever the number was right you know you there's got to be some way to plan a profit model here and i understand that one may not have been answered but the reason i asked it was just i was trying to understand is this really something that was planning to be profitable or was it just some way to have fun making amplifiers and don't take anything from that statement but anybody anybody who's seeing what i'm seeing has to think that and, well, you know, an investor is going to think a lot differently than a person building. So we'll go on to the next question. Why was it taking so long to fulfill the orders? Everyone wanted to know that. We had mention of 74 amps paid for yet unshipped. Uh, are all the amps and parts on site? What were customer expectations set as to the delivery dates of the amps? So basically, you know, how long was he telling people that they, that it was going to take? Uh We've had many messages and screenshots saying amps are being shipped out and it's been weeks or months with no amps tracking, et cetera. Can you explain? Uh, we mentioned this earlier. You mentioned about a hundred Facebook special edition amps remaining when we interviewed you. Were these amps on site? And was there no mention of them being purchased already on site? 
and there was no mention of them being purchased already, were the amps actually assembled at Bowen Audio? I mean, that's a basic question that, that we would like to know. Uh, how many amps were actually shipped out in a three-year period? That'd be a very good question to find out. What about the new products you mentioned? Mentioned, you know, we that's just something different. Uh, how many customer amps did you have on site that were non bowling amps? So we heard that several amps were not being repaired or sent in for repair, didn't come back. Uh, comments on letter versus the building, what was posted concerning the investor. Uh, let's see. And then we finished up with uh, anything you'd like to say to the investors, anything you'd like to say to the customers. What are the future plans for Bowling Audio? And the final question is, how do you think all this will affect your name in car audio in the car audio work world going forward? Yeah, I mean, and the way I put it too is, I said answer any ones that you're comfortable with, any ones you don't, you know, don't answer. No. So I felt that maybe only a couple of them were were out of um, out of reach. Like the ones of the business plan and stuff, those didn't need to be answered. But I don't see why a lot of the yeah. other ones couldn't have been. So. Don't don't let don't leave a question unasked. That's right. <laughs> you always cover your bases. So yeah, we're not we're not investigative reporters like we've already said. We just yeah. kind of fell into the middle of this unintentionally. And as Rob said before, and I'll state again, our biggest concern here is the community and understanding that we are honest people, Rob and I, and we. We don't like to fit into a situation where there seems to be some deception or some dishonesty. So we, um, yeah, we wanted to just let you guys know that having Bernie on and talking about products and talking about new stuff, and while there were still things outstanding, we didn't we didn't know there were still things outstanding, or we would have questioned him during the podcast. <laughs> hey, you're talking about new products. Why you know why aren't these people getting their products they paid for six months ago? Yeah. So that's all I have to say about it. Rob, did we miss anything? I think we covered it pretty well from our our perspective anyways. I'm sure there's a lot more that a lot of people would want to know, but uh, it's out there on Facebook. If, if you want to see into the dirty details, you can. Uh, if not, just, uh, hey. Yeah, just, again, just our chill. suggestion is request a charge back if you can. Assume you're not getting an amplifier. And be careful in the future if you ever use debit or PayPal again um, with an undetermined amount of turnaround for a product. I would always use a credit card. That way you do have a um, chargeback method. But we we feel bad for the people who do have money out there who, who are probably not going to get product. Hopefully they'll get refunds. And, and, in, and anybody that ordered the amp after our show because they seen it on the show and they were hyped. Like, we're truly sorry for that. I mean, that's very unfortunate. And, you know, we fell just as much into, into it as you did. Right. And we have, Rob and I have talked about this, about having a statement. Now we don't look in the books of people that we interview. We don't know how their company is being run and if they're in yeah. financial distress we don't know these things and i know you guys most of you out there are gonna say well, we we know that yeah. we just want to make it 100 percent clear that we would not knowingly have somebody on whose business is getting ready to be shut down in less than a month it's just not something we would do we would or, never or if we if we did we'd say hey this is what's happening he's coming to talk about old stuff you know or yeah. or whatever the case may be Exactly. So, that's all we have to say about that, as Forrest Gump once said. Yeah. So, sorry that that you guys are not hearing bashing and, um, you know, us coming to a conclusion about what we think. We have just provided the facts. We have uh, provided everything that we know about the situation, which is Mm -hmm. not a whole lot. And there's some additional information that I was not going to provide here that I was given. So yeah, I'll it's all, that. it's all personal. Like we're not going to include anything personal or, you know, there was a lot of that going around and that's not, that's not what we do. And you know, that's not our, our community people listening. They're not like that, you know? So no, 
we we know who our listeners are. That's right. So that was the the part the thing we really didn't want to have to do, but we did yeah. it. So hopefully people got some information here about the situation. Again, the statements we read were from the individuals. These were not things that were made up. These were these were from the individuals again, but the statement from Bernie did not come from him to us. We were only given the statement from the investor. So we had to get Bernie's from Facebook. Yeah. But he did he did put it on there unless somebody has access to his account and did it. So Yeah. Read with yeah. that what you which, will. Which which could be a possibility. I mean who knows? Could be. Huh. So that's all we know about that. So we're gonna move on now to fun stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah, this is our happy Wednesdays, man. I'm I'm like down here right now. I need to be up here. For the last week I have been Oh, I know. It's, it's been it's hitting you a lot a lot. It's, you know, it's I can kinda sit back in the shadows. It's hitting me harder because of all the information I've been provided and yeah. it's just it's hard. It really is. But again, we were on the outside. You know, the only reason yeah. we're in here is because of the podcast. But let's uh, you, let's do you want to do picks of the week first, and then yeah. we'll talk about the videos we've done. Yeah, I'm ready. I got a pick of the week for you right here. Cheap T handles. These things. Ex- I mean, Derek can tell you if you're testing amps and you're doing even if you're installing them, these things are invaluable. L keys are sometimes terrible to use, and these now if you can get afford a nice set, get you a nice set. But if you can't pick this up for like four or five bucks, this thing has saved my bacon so many times. It's just, it's useful. You've got them all here. You don't have to sort through. Got a nice little stand with it. Uh, I got the metric. I don't really need the standard because standard typically is not used. So yeah. Uh, uh, T-handle. Yeah. Those are specifically there from Harbor Freight, but I'm sure you can get them off Amazon or somewhere if you want to order them online. Yeah. Yeah, especially in the little tray. You know, you can just set it off to the side, do what you need to do, and you got a spot to put it back, and it fits that that uh, TN only. So the one thing we should say though is if you if you work on a lot of old school amps, a lot of the old school ones still do use the um, the non metric, the US spec. Have you noticed that? Yeah, like some of the Rockford Fosgate. And yep, the Rockford the older Ryan's. PPIs. You want to know a dirty little secret though? A lot of times these these metric ones will still work if you're not putting a ton of torque on them. Yeah, you shouldn't have the screws that tight anyway where you have to really yeah. torque them. <laughs> but if they haven't been opened in you know 30 years, sometimes they are kind of tight. So what you got, D? That's cool. So what I've got here is not sponsored. <laughs> and it's really, you know, I didn't know what to think about these. We've seen these online before. These are the SMD terminal cups. And this is not like the fancy ones that are magnetic or anything. It's just a dual, um, you know, either for two speakers or a dual voice coil singer, single speaker. But those who are listening can't see how thick this joker is, but it is fat. And it's really, I mean, you can't bend it. Super durable. But I just got a, um, don't laugh at me, a prefab box for a subwoofer I'm getting ready to show off on my channel. And some of you guys are like, don't you build a box, man, you lazy. Well... I don't have the setup like Rob does to, to build a box. And if I did it, I could do it, but it would take me several hours. And so I bought a prefab that's designed for the, the size that this woofer needs. And I just decided I want to get one of these to mount it. So I am going to have to cut the box some. But uh, you guys stick around because you're going to have some fun when I show off this this woofer. Yeah. So before I comment on the s and I'm going to say... D, we have an episode about how to build a subwoofer enclosure. You should check it out. 12 Volt Talk. YouTube.com slash 12 Volt Talk. Yeah, All it's right. not that I don't know how to build one. <laughs> it's just the time it takes me versus the reward. Yeah. So in this case, I will be able to actually make a video instead of spending all day trying to make a subwoofer box. So those those SMD terminals, I haven't got to use them yet, but man, those things look nice. I've checked them out online, and and you can tell they're they're sturdy looking. So I can't actually speak to it, but uh, yeah, I've been wanting to use some. Yeah, well, they're twenty five bucks. I mean, I know, I know Steve. Uh, we text back and forth and talk a little bit, but I don't ask. 
I'm not the kind of person that asks people for stuff, and I would never ask him for these. No. I mean, this is 25 bucks, and and I, the way I look at it is he makes them there. You know, I know he makes a pretty good profit on it, but uh, I needed something like this, and it helps support him. It's you know, made in the USA, all that kind of stuff, so I don't mind shelling out 25 bucks. Well, the fact of the matter is, who else was making these? Nobody was making these, you know. He he come up with the idea, just like he come up with the magnetic connects. Uh, he's come up with the fastener fastenerless design. I mean, the dude's actually innovating here. I mean, this isn't just some cookie cutter Korean three K amp. Ouch! <laughs> Ooh, that hurt. He said cookie cutter in Korean. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you just you just hurt a lot of feelings there, Rob. We might have future people on the show that won't even show up now because of that talk. No, I hope not. I hope they all come. They can yeah. just yell at me. I'm cool. I, yeah. I, I got I got strong a strong back. I, I can take some abuse. Well, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all we're going to say about that. So what do you got video-wise coming up? You got some cool oh, stuff? So I'm still working on the 12-inch shootout final video i almost gave away what it's gonna be when i was saying it but i caught myself uh i just released the test of the little xera ax a 10 d it's like a budget ball ramp 65 dollars shipped from crutchfield uh so go check that video out and i've got it i've got a video that's gonna be out this weekend very cool uh i'm not gonna say what it is yet but it's it's a somewhat of a part three to one of my most popular videos. So cool. That Xera amp. I didn't realize that thing was that small until you Me neither. Showed how big But yeah. I, I can't believe they still have those in stock. I think they do. They still have them in yeah. stock. They have the four channel and they also have the mono block still in stock. They have the, they have a big two channel too. That's rated ninety channel. watts by two at forms stereo, which that's quite a lot of power. Yeah, and they're sixty five dollars shipped each. The yeah, that's the four channel. The two channel is fifty five. Fifty five. Yeah. Wow. So if you need a little amp, and, and there's a little secret to those amps that you'll find a, out in the video. I won't give it away. I was about to say it, but I won't. Let's just <laughs> say they're not made in China. China. They're not made in China. <laughs> so uh, some of the things I have coming up, I just talked about it a little bit, uh, related to the SMD terminal here. have a subwoofer I'm going to show off that was actually sent to me uh, by a manufacturer. I usually don't accept things. But something like this is not something I would go out and buy anyway, and it made me think about some of the th some of the ways I like to test amps, and especially some of the bigger amps I've been testing. People always ask me, you know, wire it to half an ohm. Well, the dyno half an ohm is not a realistic half an ohm load on amplifier because of impedance rise or box rise or whatever you want to call it. When you actually hook up a speaker at a half an ohm the amp rarely sees half an ohm. It sees much higher than that. So this subwoofer that I'm going to show off is one that I can wire to a half an ohm and it can handle enough power to test with some of the bigger amps. So I, I kind of wanted to use it as not only a demo to show it off for a video, but also to use it in the future for testing the amplifiers and showing about box rise and, and show what happens when you have it wired to point five and run a mono block amp you know will it really handle it just things like that so that's exciting and i've got so many other things on backlog still for the oss meet back in um october i still haven't finished editing that video yet i've got a few other ones in the cooker as well this time of year for me and for family is really busy because of all the events that the kids are involved in during the parades and all the stuff that we have to do around here so it's tough for me to to fit in the time to do a whole lot of videos even though i have so many that i want to do <laughs> and uh you know we'll get there i'm getting close to eighty thousand subscribers i've got like seventy nine thousand, and i've been in this mode since i had i think since i hit 50 50 was a big number to me and i'm really trying hard to push myself to make the video each week or do two some weeks or 
I'm doing some behind the scenes stuff for the people on Patreon. So if you want to support me on Patreon, at like a dollar a month or a little bit, a little more, uh, I'll throw up some behind the scenes stuff. You get to see stuff that other people don't get to see. And, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to work this into a full-time gig. Hopefully I can one day, but for now it's just fun. Yeah. And I mean, I can, I, I can speak to that because, you know, I've recently decided like, Hey, I'm going to treat this like a job. So, you know, before it was just hobby to me, I'd put them out when I can, then and there. But uh, I noticed that when you put a little more time into it, you're more consistent with the amount of videos you're putting out. You know, you start you start gaining some steam. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to treat it like a job. I'm trying to, uh, instead of working overtime at work, I'm trying to, you know, put a little extra time into this. I started my own Patreon, and I do at least one exclusive video for the entry tier for the month. So... There's already one up now. I've got another one that I'm editing. It'll be up next weekend. So, yeah, if you check me out, patreon.com slash high five vega, if you want to see some exclusive content, uh, t shirts from me and Big D Wiz. I've got one on here. Uh, if you want to get a t shirt for Christmas, order it soon. Uh, teespring.com slash high five vega merch for me. And it's teespring.com slash old school stereo. Yeah, that you? takes you to one of the shirts. So it's teespring.com slash store slash Big D Wiz. Okay. It'll take you to all the different products I have. You can even get a coffee mug. Yeah. It doesn't have my mug on it, but you can get a coffee mug. Yeah, I've got a sticker on there. I've got a hoodie. I've got a long sleeve. Uh, I'm going to have stickers printed soon, so that, that'll be an update. That's cool, man. People, you know, I think a lot of times when people watch videos, and we've said this before, they don't realize the time because you watch a video that's 10 minutes long you think well that that took 10 minutes or maybe 20 minutes to make we're talking days here people we're talking shoot it one day you know shoot this shoot that um get into the editor and then you're editing and editing and then editing audio and then adding voiceovers and adding pictures and adding lower thirds and all this generally speaking i'm 12 hours 10 to 12 hours editing per video that i put up yeah and it robs the same and that's not including the other the shooting and the other stuff so just when you when you see our videos just think about you know the time that we had to give up to do this but don't take that the wrong way i love what i do if i didn't love what i did do then i wouldn't do it but i i just think that you know a lot of people don't understand why can't you do two, three, four, five a week or whatever. Yeah. And it's because we have other responsibilities. We have full-time jobs. We have families that have, you know, extracurricular activities and we have chores. And, and, you know, that's part of the reason why we started this, because this is a way for us to be out there when we're not on our own channels. We're out here. You're getting more of our opinions here. You're getting to see our personalities more, like obviously mine. Yours, you know, we kind of see your personality anyways. Because Big D's going to be Big D no matter where he's at. But, uh, you know, this this is a way for you to kind of see, like, a lot of times you don't get Big D's opinions on things or my opinion. So this is a way to see us, a way to get our opinions. And, you know, someday we may start a Patreon for this channel. Who knows? Uh, maybe we'll get some merch. Maybe we'll get official logo. Yeah, maybe we'll get some people supporting or some manufacturers or whoever supporting the podcast and you know be able to do this during the day and and make videos on the weekends or whatever so we'll see we're yeah. we're just having fun with it right now so so out there in in uh sq land i uh i just recently listened to about half a podcast of sqology they had on manville smith and man let me tell you that is a very good interview so we already know you're an audio podcast. You should check it out. Uh, Big D said they've done Gary Biggs, and I must have missed that somehow. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to listen to that one as well. So check them out. Yeah, I think the Gary Biggs one was just released um, today or yesterday because I pulled them up a few days ago, and I did listen to the Manville Smith one, which was very good. Yeah. Gary Biggs one was like two and a half hours. So wow. it was a nice long one. He talked a lot about the old stuff and how he got into car audio. It was It was very cool. So Did I, was, I get to mention about the Apple the Apple review podcast reviews? No, nah, we didn't talk about it yet, so go ahead. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Nope. No uh, 
so we did we did pick a winner. John Booth got in contact. All this stuff happened. I didn't get a chance to ship out that sub yet, but I'm going to ship it out in the next few days. We are at 51 reviews last time. Uh, let's get to 75. I'm giving another one, another sub away, identical to that one. And then when we get to 100, D's going to give an amp away. So keep the reviews coming. You know, let's keep the train rolling. We're starting. We're picking up on our YouTube subscribers. We're picking up on our listen listeners audio only. So, you know, we're getting there. Yeah, and I, I checked our YouTube gives a lot of analytics about videos. And like on my channel, I think the average view time is like four minutes. The average view time on these this channel is 33 minutes. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Nice. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for sticking around. I'm sure you guys don't watch the video the whole time and see my ugly face. But <laughs> um, we appreciate you guys listening. So that's really all that we had to cover for today. Yeah. We uh, encourage you to check us out on your favorite podcast app, uh, 12V Talk, also youtube.com slash 12V Talk. You can see us on Facebook. You can also catch uh, Mr. Vega, Hi-Fi Vega on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. And I'm Big D Wiz on YouTube, and I'm Old School Stereo on Facebook, and I'm also Williston Audio Labs on Instagram because I like a man of many names. A man I, of many names. I like to names. have a bunch. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I guess we'll call it the end of this episode. Next week we'll have a very exciting guest. Oh we're yeah, super excited about. So make sure that you join us next week if you we've can. We've got live. lots. We've got lots of guests coming, and and hopefully none of their companies close. After I hope we're not cursed. Yes, <laughs> we will, we will have to get as Rob said before. Dick Riculous might may have to make a. <laughs> Uh, educational comment at the beginning of the show <laughs> saying that you know these guests have their own opinions and you know we can't verify everything i'm not sure what i'll say yet but <laughs> anyway well thanks guys we will catch you on the next one till then right here that was a good one. You went long on that one. Yeah. I was trying to hold I could have held it for long. One time I'm going to hold it as long as I can. <laughs> then, then the windows going to start breaking. <laughs> All right, people in the chat. we now, You now have our full attention. Okay. So if you've asked a question before, please ask it again because I'm going to scroll through. But Yeah, I'm going to try to scroll through too. Let's see what we got. Holy moly. Yeah, somebody asked 74 customers or 74 amps. I don't, I don't know. I thought it was 74 amps, but it may be 74 customers. I think it's 74 amps. Yeah. I think so. Uh, the Indian guy, 25 amps. I think I did say that. That. Uh, yeah. That was in the statement from the investor. It was actually 24 amps and one something board, else. PCB. Yeah, yeah. Maurice said that he paid for an SQ 1100 on 1114. I know that Rob, one of our uh, admins, Rob, um, I'm not going to give his last name. Yeah, I know you're he, talking about. Yeah, he recently, he bought the 250 model. And it was literally, two day, it was like the 28th of November. And the announcement wow. was made on the 30th. So, and Dude. he used, I think he used a debit or something for his too. Somebody says two years to get the, uh, an amp doesn't make sense. I would have to agree with that. Somebody's comment says you put your family on the line but don't know what Bernie's doing. I think as an investor, and again, we're not investors here, that you... Or I, you or I, <laughs> yeah. putting money in, I would sure as heck want to know what was going on operationally. Yeah. I'd want to I'd want to have all those statements every month. I want to make sure that the funds that are going in are showing something in return. Now, the fact that that wasn't mentioned here 
there could be a different reason. I'm not going to read into it any further, but I agree with that statement that if I was providing continual funding in, yeah, 100%. I would want to see something. It said there is a video. Oh, I need to check that out. Video on YouTube. A video about what? I don't know. Tell it. Tell us in the new comments. Yeah, what? somebody somebody post a link if you can. Yeah. Is T Turner and David V mentioned it? Yeah. Somebody asked, did I order one? Um, no. So as I said earlier, if you miss it in the podcast, after we had our conversation with Bernie, I did. I went to the page which I, I always thought it was odd, too, that they didn't have a website where you could order the amps. They either want you, to call, they want you to call in or send an email or send them a Facebook message. I said, well, I'm just going to pretend like I'm a regular customer. I'm not going to you know, use this phone number or all the stuff I had. I'm just going to send them a Facebook message because that's what some people would do. I never heard anything, which is good now. So I'm not out 800 bucks. Yeah, that's no. That's, uh... Oh, man, they did. They hit you with the Kickstarter. Yeah, I saw that. Like 25 people said it. And what what I do, hum, hum and haw for about two minutes before yeah, I come we'll up have with to it? Cut, we'll have to cut that one out when we're editing the audio. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. I just step right over you like, Kickstarter. It's Kickstarter. Yeah, and David says uh, if there are parts, then amps should be made. We don't know... And since it was not provided to us, how many parts or amplifiers or whatever that were ready to ship out were actually there, we didn't bring it up because we didn't want to make any assumptions. But I believe from some of the people that I've heard, there are some there, but I would not assume that everybody who's paid for it has an amplifier there. Yeah, and then, you know, Mark says on here, no matter who is at fault here, I'd say Bolin Audio is finished as a viable car audio entity. And he's probably true. I mean, this kind of stuff, it sticks with you. It doesn't it doesn't bode well, especially yeah, so, it, unless they make it right somehow. Right. So pre-internet days, things like this could happen, and then nobody would really know. You'd hear, you know, things in a magazine or something. Um, people that were involved would know, but... Not everybody would know. So things like this happen now, you know, it it comes up to the top. <laughs> yeah. There's you know, no, way, no way to hide behind this. Joaquin says only pre-order what you can afford to lose. That That's, that's certainly true. true because, that's... you know, hopefully you weren't putting your family out by buying a $600 amp in the first place. So hopefully the people that it paid, it didn't put them in a bind that way. It's just you're not getting what you paid for, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think some people may have may have believed in the delay because they were actually offering the custom laser engraving. Yeah. So the fact that that was a custom add to the amp, maybe you know that would make sense as to why it would take longer. But six months or two years or whatever, some people were waiting. I don't think it, it says to that. So Shane, Shane's got a comment. I'm not going to read it on there, but it's, well, that's did you just see? wrong, man. You just <laughs> you just teasing us. Not even kidding. He says, "Oh man." Yeah, people are talking about the uh, SMD output meter and voltmeters are cool. And then somebody says twenty five dollars. Good lord, he got layaway. <laughs> Heard that, man. Heard that. Yeah. Wait until next year if you guys think this stuff's expensive now. The price the price rises are coming. Yeah. And everything. Dude, there's so many questions in here. I'm seeing a lot of comments. I'm not seeing a lot of questions. Well, that's what I mean. Can you talk about the Amp Dino comment I made, how it's changing car audio? Uh, William, I don't see your previous, oh, it says how the Amp Dino is holding car audio companies accountable and may create a new car audio arms race. Yeah, that might be a good, uh, 
topic for an episode because that's pretty deep. You could get deep into that. Yeah, you know, it's... Amdino tests are fun for me because when I used to get the magazines, the first thing I would do was I would flip to see what amplifier they were testing. I always wanted to see the specs. Yeah. That was just my, and of course I wanted to read what the guy's opinion was too, because they would usually put it in their car and he'd talk about, Oh, you know, this song, hell's bells or whatever, never sounded so good. You know, you just, you'd, you'd like to hear what somebody had to say, but the specs part to me, I was always wondering why in the heck a punch 45 was rated 22 Watts per channel but it was louder than 100 watts per channel amps at the at the shop. I'm like, there's something else here. This is not magic sauce. What's going on? Yeah. So when the dyno came out, and I was like, man, I got all these old school amps. This will be fun to find out what these things really do. And then we start get, we got into the cheap, you know, the cheap amps that we could test that did 1500 watts for 150 bucks, and it just kind of grew from there. And it was like, well, what about these more expensive ones? Are these things really worth it? Yeah. But you know, output power, does it tell the whole picture of an amplifier? It does I, on the on the low end, I think. Yeah, I, I'm not versed enough with the listening of all of these to say that, you know, a 1500 watt audio pipe doesn't sound as good as a 1500 watt Sundown or whatever brand you want to call it or any brand. Yeah. Even a Genesis or, you know, super high end brand. But they're built better. That's why they cost more. They have better components. They're going to last longer. So just like, you know, comparing a, a trailer that's 14 feet by 70 feet versus a single story house that's 14 by 70. They both have the same amount of square footage inside. You know, a storm comes, it's going to blow away the trailer, but not the, the other yeah. house. But And a good, a good point on that, your last video where you, you've done the drag race one, the Ignite and the Boss. And you ask people, you know, which amp, just by looking at them, do you prefer? Well, even though the Ignite technically won, uh, you know, everyone commented like, hey, there's a double airboard on the boss. It's got better protection circuitry. It's got, you know, this and that. So. Yeah, that's true. So it, there's more to it than just the power. but, And that's kind of why I wanted to get the subwoofer in and, and do some tests with it as well. But. I don't want to make my videos longer than they already are. They're already too long. But the dyno test parts are, are fun. It's it's hard to show sound quality on video. It's impossible. Over YouTube, you know. So. Impossible to show sound quality. Yeah, somebody says, I love the amp dyno test, but there's too much emphasis on raw power. Right. Yeah. that's. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. What does the dyno like yours cost? I think Black Friday they had them drop down to like twenty four ninety nine. Wow, that's a thousand dollars off. Of yeah, the they're, norm price. they're normally thirty five hundred, I think. Yeah, I think they originally sold them for around twenty five hundred, yes. and then cost must have went up significantly. It did. It went so, over twelve hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. You know, they probably started selling them. It was like, hey, hey, wait a minute. We might be losing a little money here. <laughs> yeah, because I mean they're all hand built, so yeah. It takes time. Vega, could you guys test some power supplies? Hmm. So I've tested the... Um, the RS? RD. 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 RD power? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's 179 189 bucks. Uh, you've got the Cossel? Is that the ones you have? I've got the Cosell. Cosell. Howard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Howard Cosells. How much do those <laughs> cost? I think it's, man, it's like four or five hundred dollars. Oh wow! Something like that. You can find them used for like three, three fifty. Yeah. Okay. I got the old uh, "I got you," the old JDR. I got you on that. So he really hooked me up. Well, just don't get into the solder fumes, and we'll be okay. No, I was in solder fumes. You'll see in my next video. Come this weekend. <laughs> That's what happened to me on this video. Yes, uh, we had some people who just joined and asked about, 
you know, if we covered about bowling audio. So yes, you're gonna have to go back. We yeah. did cover it for about 30 minutes. <clears throat> we covered it. So what I'll do is once this video uh, is posted, once we stop the live stream, it'll process and it'll post. I'll go in and and put the exact stamp of when the podcast part starts. Jeff was referring to Jeff from Parts Express. Future information coming on that. Oh, Oh, yes. (laughs) Did I install the Orion SPLX amp yet? John, I'm not... not, Did I say I was going to install that one? (laughs) The which one? The SPLX the three three K? I don't think I'm installing that one, John. That's not one of the amps Dude. I was gonna try on my ten W seven. That would probably send that ten W seven airborne. Did I did I cut out on you? I I forgot to put my phone in do not disturb mode and I just got a scam call. Oh I didn't hear it. Yeah. Alright, good. Somebody said your videos aren't too long, folks. Attention spans too short. <laughs> I like them. Let's see. So I want to I want to make this perfectly clear, perfectly clear. So everybody hears who's still sticking around and is listening. We are not doing any follow up on Bowen Audio. Yeah. No further. We're not doing this again. Never. (laughs) The end. Sorry. You guys can check it on Facebook. You can get your messages directly from the source yourself. We did what we wanted to do here. We provided both sides. And we're done. The end. Yeah. Couldn't set any better myself. Oh, we got Gordon Marcus in the chat as well. Hadn't oh, cool. seen him since the last North Carolina meet that I attended before this one. All right. Well, I think we've um, said all we can say. Rob, what do you think? Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining the live stream. Sorry we were stumbling there a little bit at the end, reading through the questions. but um, Yeah. yeah. We'll be back next week. Very cool guest. Guest. I can speak. Be real excited about the one next week because it's it's very exciting. We're pumped. We've looked into his Oz financials. (laughs) 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 Let's just say he he knows a thing or two about bass. Yeah. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're stopping the stream. We're signing off. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Later.